Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for the complimentary ICMI webinar, The Call Center Trade Game, Who Would You Trade Places With? Sponsored by Jabra and i I'm Erica Strother, Community Specialist at ICMI, and I'll be your host for today's presentation. Before we begin, let's take care of a few housekeeping items. First, make sure you disable your pop-up blocker if it's on. You will notice there are several icons at the bottom of the console window. The first allows you to see the presentation slides, so make sure that this one is maximized. Next is the Q&A icon. We will be hosting a live Q&A throughout this webinar, and you can participate by asking questions at any time during the presentation. All you have to do is type your question into that window and then click Submit. We will also be conducting a couple of polls during this presentation, and we encourage your participation. This webinar is meant to be interactive for everyone. On that note, we encourage you to be social throughout this event. Please take note of the official hashtags and handles you see on your screen, and feel free to interact and share your insights or questions throughout the event. Now, if you're experiencing any technical difficulties during this presentation, you can click the question mark icon on the console to access the event help guide. Clicking on the other icons on the console will give you access to speaker bios, more information about our sponsors, Jobber and i as well as information about upcoming ICMI events. You can also download a version of today's presentation in PDF form. And at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you my co-host for the day. Um, on behalf of Jabra, Kay Phelps will be helping me out. She's the Contact Center Segment Marketing Manager for Jabra. We also have Tona Holman, the SVP of Operations for i -Cor. Now we've got a lot of ground to cover today and some exciting stuff to see, so I will kick off the event portion of this presentation, and it's time to meet our game show contestants for the day. So let's kick things off with contestant number one. On behalf of Wells Fargo, we have George Larabus with us today. He works in the Treasury Management Services Client Division, and I'm sure most of you are at least somewhat familiar with the services that Wells Fargo provides, but just to give you a brief overview of Wells Fargo, it is a huge organization, and across all the divisions, they do have thousands of agents, though the division that George oversees is a bit smaller. They are a financial services provider, and some of the cool things that they're doing right now revolve around innovative things in video and mobile, and they also pride themselves on how quickly they're able to respond to their customers. One fun fact is last, well, the average amount of calls that this team takes on a month is greater than 80,000. So with that, I will take you behind the scenes at Wells Fargo, and we'll take a look at some of their processes and meet some of their team members. Treasury Management Client Services is actually spread across multiple sites. We have 49 client service officers. We have five team leads and four client service managers. At this site, we have approximately 60 CSOs. The client service officers receive phone calls, emails, faxes from their customer that they respond to via fax or email or phone call, as well as the technical services officers. They actually assist customers with computer issues, um, software issues, whatever they need in terms of technical services and we have a load balancing system and that load balancing system will take a look at the incoming call, look at the four different client services sites and then direct that call to the site that can answer the call the fastest. This helps us deliver A plus service to our customers. Uh, a plus service means going above and beyond for our customers, you know, anything that our competition can do, we can do just that little bit better because we either have better tools, better people, or just a better um, overall organization to provide them that, that little extra. We always want each customer to feel like they're the only one, like they're extra special, because they are. I always tell my team members, put yourself in their place. Not only are we the customer's advocate, we're also their liaison. 
exceptional customer service. Um, you know, I, I think the relentless pursuit of, uh, of communication is essential for me. Um, and I, I've had some good experiences with banks and in particular with Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is absolutely unmatched customer service and we hear about it every single day. Um, customers actually came to us to test their checks for another bank because their bank, they said, I don't have a person like you to go to. We're very excited about our floor. Our floor consists of open cubicles, open conference rooms. One of the tools that we have here in technical services is the assignment board. Our client service officers all can see our board from their desk. So that way they can see how many calls are holding in queue, how many other CSOs are on calls or waiting for calls, and then they can see how long any calls in queue might be holding as well. The dual monitors allow our CSOs to multitask. Um, basically, they can track a call where they're able to put in the customer's information as well as research at the same time. So on one screen, they could be entering the information um, about the customer call and how to resolve it, as well as doing some research regarding maybe a check or the account, just getting additional information in order to resolve that issue. Um, we have the Service Excellence Award, which is awarded to um, client service officers for providing excellent services to their customers. Um, it's based on um, feedback we receive from our internal partners as well as customers. Um, thank you notes. Delivering A-plus service and support takes expertise, and we have it. I am proud that our client service officers and members of our leadership team are certified by the International Customer Service Association and have extensive training in the treasury management products and services we offer our customers. Delivering A-plus service and support also takes ongoing monitoring. We apply state-of-the-art technology with customer-centric disciplines that enables us to drive shorter case resolution times and higher customer satisfaction scores. We respond to email and voicemails within two hours of receipt, and we address the root cause of each issue and fix it. In order to deliver a service and support, we are available when customers need us. Our service centers in the Eastern, Central, and Pacific time zones are staffed with trained client service officers to respond immediately and take action to solve issues. Delivering A-plus service and support is the Treasury Management Client Delivery Group's mission and focus. All right. Thank you, George and Wells Fargo. So you, now that you've gone behind the scenes at Wells Fargo, we'll introduce you to our second contestant of the day. Today we have Philly 311 here, and Rosetta carrington Lou actually had a last-minute scheduling conflict, so stepping in on her behalf today we have Cheryl Johnson as well as Ryan Birchmeyer. And just to give you a little background on Philly 311, they provide non-emergency help to residents of Philadelphia, and their small group of agents have a big culture, and they really pride themselves on the things that they're doing with social media. Ryan and, and Cheryl, would you guys like to say hi to the audience? Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us. All right. So we went behind the scenes of Wells Fargo, and we'll do the same for Philly 311. Here we go. 311 is really the way we connect with citizens across Philadelphia. Um, it gives them really three digits, right? You call 911 for an emergency. Everything else is 311. <music> 311, I think, is such a powerful tool in that A, it's easy to remember, but it also, um, it's an empowering, it's just an empowerment concept, both in terms of the call center, but some of the technology that the center has used. I think 311 definitely helps. Uh, I use it all the time I work here. I report graffiti, you know, out street lights, malfunctioning uh, traffic lights, stuff like that all the time.
he needs a customer service because there is no other level of customer service. If you are delivering bad customer service, you're not really delivering anything. So what we try to do here is make this the standard for customer service. And um, uh, what we try to deliver on a daily basis is a quality of service that you should expect in any other arena that you go to, but specifically from your city government. It all starts with Mayor Michael Knox. Um, when he was elected as the mayor of the fifth largest city in America, one of his major initiatives was to um, have a transparent government and a government that is responsive and is accessible to all citizens in the city. Uh, we sort of facilitate um, information. We facilitate a way for you to reach out to different city departments and you don't have to call a bunch of different places to be able to call one number for non emergency and get transactions or get your issues resolved. Um, from a city standpoint. So customer service starts with that leadership at that high level. Oh, when we get a call, we help customers and constituents by giving them phone numbers. We help them with service requests, um, different complaints that, you know, some people don't know where to go. So, we don't want help. Well, the one I, I believe is customer service in action. The idea behind it is that we want to deliver quality customer service, um, but we want that to lead to a service and a result. 311 has won numerous awards. In particular, for three consecutive years, we have received the most engaged citizen designation from uh, PTI and it really speaks to the number of programs and the way, the different ways in which we engage with the communities of Philadelphia. Um, you can reach us on Twitter for the same type of questions, the same type of services that you can reach us for on the phone. You can do that on Facebook as well. You can do that by email. You can also download our Philly Film on mobile app. And then you don't have to speak to anyone, but you can enter seven different types of service requests that we take on your own and you feel empowered that you have the resources to get these things done by yourself. All right. Thanks to Philly 311. These are some pretty awesome videos, huh? So I will now introduce you to contestant number three, our final contestant for the day. Um, on behalf of Freeman, we have Brenda McCord here today, and she's the Vice President of Customer Support at Freeman. Just to give you a little background on their company, Freeman is a B2B organization, and they specialize in face-to-face -face marketing and events. They currently have 17 customer support reps, and they really place a very high value on their employees. Want to say hi, Brenda? Hello. This is Brenda McCord. And we will now go behind the scenes at Freeman. Welcome to WCSC, where the Customer Support Center news. I'm Taisha, and this is Yusinia. Thanks, Taisha. Today's top stories include a review of CSC's training and also an overlook at the executive leadership that's involved around the center. But first, let's take it to our weather reporter, Huang. How's it looking over there, Huang? Well, this morning, we're enjoying high ceilings and bright fluorescent lighting. If we take a closer look at one of these 7 by 8 feet spacious cubicles, we'll get a bright, shiny view of the adjustable keyboard tray and adjustable chair. We also have a clear picture of the dual monitor screens and also the partial glass walls as a visual aid. Today looks like it's going to be a great day over at CSC. Now let's take a quick look at how it's going in the CSC's main traffic areas. The front office area is a little congested this morning with some bystanders observing our three J.D. Powers & Associates Call Center Certification Trophies. As we move along, we see a monthly team meeting occurring in one of the conference rooms. Here we see our Freeman Service Vision Standard posters, keeping us all moving in the right direction. They are displayed around the call center and remind us each day of our service vision and our 10 service standards. And finally, we see the manager directing traffic by handing out gift cards for outstanding service. Great weather and great traffic. What else does today have in store for us, Yusinia? There's a lot going on in today's CSC Sports Today, Paisha. The CSC reps display quick reflexes by answering phone calls in a timely manner. Their flexibility also comes in as they respond to emails from the generic mailbox and through web chat on freemanco.com. The CSC toll-free number, email address, and live chat can all be easily accessed through freemanco.com. The team really pulls together to achieve winning service scores every day. 
Speaking of scores, 100% of the calls are recorded for quality assurance through our CXM application. CSC reps listen to themselves while the supervisor provides play-by-play -play coaching for quality assurance. Customer survey responses are also reviewed as part of the QA process. Our recorded software stores the best of call library. These Hall of Fame calls are real examples of superior service. The CSC manager compiles the team statistics and recognizes monthly all-stars and MVP team members. Now let's take a look at today's top stories. A look at the CSC new employee training reveals that new employees receive six weeks of one-on-one -on -one training to prepare them to provide world-class service. Additionally, new employees have the advantage of being mentored by senior representatives. Freeman provides company-wide customer service training and certification. All CSC reps benefit from ongoing training throughout the year using the company e-learning courses, which is a fantastic employee development tool. In other top stories, we found that Freeman executive leadership is not only valuable for the company, but for the CSC reps as well. Quarterly group meetings with the leaders of IT, marketing, and customer relations have resulted in positive changes to Freeman Online as well as many of the other Freeman applications. The leadership team knows that the feedback from the CSC team is essential for giving a real voice of the customer perspective. Freeman CEO Joe Popolo recently visited customer support and listened as the reps took phone calls from the Freeman New York office that was affected by Hurricane Sandy. CSC will continue to take phone calls for the Freeman New York office as long as needed. It's all part of the Freeman True Blue collaboration culture. Now to bring us up to date in our latest fashion and entertainment news is our entertainment reporter Mallory. Today I'm wearing the wireless headset directly from the customer support call center. The headset has three convertible options, over the ear, over the head, or neckband for behind the head. Very fashionable. Moving on to entertainment news, let's take a look to see what the CSC team has been doing to keep things enjoyable as they work throughout the day. Holiday contests create a fun work environment. Employees who are hired or promoted are recognized through email announcements. Themed potluck meals are also given to celebrate special occasions and life events of the employee. The CSC team knows how to stay involved and interested at work while also keeping their customers happy. As you can see, the CSC is busy promoting the true blue Freeman values as integrity, empathy, innovation, enthusiasm, and performance excellence, which support Freeman's three performance pillars, operational excellence, sustainable profitability, and uncompromising service. This team also follows our company vision of working together and our company purpose of connecting people in meaningful ways. I'm Yesenia, and it's been a pleasure giving you the top news of the Freeman Customer Support Center. And I'm Taisha, and we'd like to thank you for tuning in to WCSC, where the customers support news. Have a great day. All right, what a fun video. So creative. Thanks, Brenda. So I hope you guys enjoyed those sneak peeks just as much as I did. One thing that we at ICMI hear a lot from the community is that you guys want to see what other contact centers are doing that's working well and maybe some of the challenges that they're facing. So hopefully that provided some good insight for you guys. And now we're going to ask some questions of our contestants to get a little bit more of a feel of how they do things in their contact centers. And take notes because towards the end of the presentation, we're actually going to have you guys in the audience vote on which contact center you'd like to trade places with. So to kick off this question portion, I will start with George. And George, if you could just answer the question on the screen, what does your contact center do to increase employee motivation and satisfaction? Oh, thank you. Well, we have a lot of programs um, that we have implemented, um, but four I want to highlight. Uh, one of them is really about what we consider our open door policy. And it's where we empower our frontline team members to speak to anyone at any level uh, about any issue that they're having. Sometimes it's about just having a conversation of where policy and procedure just doesn't work well for customers. And so it allows them to have that dialogue and we can get to resolution and fix things that maybe um, management is not aware of. Um, so we ensure that we have an open door policy for all our team members. The other item we have is what we call iZone or Innovation Zone, and it's really a website where team members can go in and any idea that they have to improve the customer experience, improve a, a tool or system that they use on a daily basis, or improve a process, they can enter that into a 
into a website, and uh, we have a group of individuals on the back end that actually vet out all those ideas, uh, update the team member who submitted that idea, and uh, work to either implementing it or giving an explanation of what uh, the next steps will be in order for that uh, idea to come to fruition. Um, the other item is really about uh, employee recognition and celebrating. Uh, my mantra is celebrate often and as uh, many times throughout the, the day as possible. Um, we should be celebrating uh, at least one time a week. There's always something that comes through my desk or any of the manager's desk talking about uh, customers, uh, service officers' accolades uh, where they have uh, helped a customer and we want to make sure that uh, we're uh, giving them acknowledgement not only um, on a quarterly basis or uh, but also on the spot and making sure that we're uh, reinforcing uh, the uh, behaviors and also uh, bringing up the loyalty scores and the last one is really about listening to our team members and making sure that uh, that they have a voice and that uh, they have every right to make uh, or suggest changes uh, to the processes that they're using on a day-to-day -day basis and making sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to move the obstacles out of their way in order to service our customers. Uh, so I would say those are the three, uh, the four things that uh, you know that we do on a regular basis: open door policy, innovation zone, uh, celebrate often, and listen to our team members. Awesome, great, thanks so much, George. Um, Cheryl and Ryan, can you guys tell us a little bit about what your contact center does to increase employee motivation and satisfaction? Absolutely. Similar to George, uh, we do have an open communications policy where employees may um, exercise the freedom to speak with anybody at any level, um, including the managing director's office. And so that is very positively uh, received by our um, agents. We also have an employee development program, and what that does is give employees an opportunity to see other jobs and um, also to help them to develop their own skills. And so even when they go back into their normal jobs, it gives them a, a different perspective and a broader perspective on things that they normally would not come in, in contact with. And the benefit for us, of course, is we're helping to grow um, our in-house talent. We also conduct surveys and focus groups and uh, report back on the things that we're doing to address any issues that come up because um, they are the voice of our customers and we want to make sure that we hear what their issues and concerns are and keep them actively engaged. We also invite our, um, on a quarterly basis, there is a departmental performance meeting with um, executives around the table, and we invite uh, groups of employees to attend that, again, to give them um, a broader view of the impact of the work uh, that they do. And there's an internal uh, employee-run um, recognition committee, and that really helps to balance the stresses um, the day-to-day -day stresses with the work, um, and also it increases the support and camaraderie within the department. And we utilize um, various newsletters to uh, keep them abreast of uh, various things, and there's even a recognition committee newsletter in which we, you know, post things about that are going on uh, for people that aren't necessarily work-related as well. And finally, we uh, share out our customer satisfaction results so that they see what our customers are saying um, about us, and that goes over very well. Great. Thanks so much for those insights, Cheryl. Uh, Brenda, it's your turn. Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys at Freeman are doing to increase employee motivation and satisfaction? Well, each one of our customer support reps have a service vision card which um, expresses our service vision con that confirms our commitment to, a to providing outstanding ex uh, service and exceeding the customer's expectations. Also on that card are our 10 service standards, and we provide, uh, we provide our managers and supervisors with gift cards, Starbucks, McDonald's, Target, iTunes, and if uh, they ask an employee if they have one of their service cards on them and they can produce it, they receive a gift card. If they can tell you what the standard of the month is, they can get a gift card for that also. So it makes it 
visible to them. They, they keep it with them at all times. They have them sitting out on their desks. They know what it represents. Um, we also recognize our employees as service heroes. So if a customer survey comes in with a compliment about one of our customer support reps, then that comment is posted not only on our internet site, but we have a large service hero board in our call center, and their name is posted up there, and the service that they provided that, uh, that uh, made the customer produce a compliment, and they receive a gift card for that. The service board is, is a visual to all of the customer service reps as to what our standard of the month is, what we're, the service and the behavior we're, we're wanting to provide to our customers, and also if they're unclear as to what the standard means, they can walk up and read. This, this CSC rep provided a no excuses standard or a take it personally or customer driven, and they can read what that service looks like. And, and hopefully be driven to provide that service to our customers also. Great. Thank you, Brenda. That's awesome Welcome. to hear. So we will move on to our second question, and that is, what is the biggest challenge your contact center has overcome? And we'll start with you first again, George. Great. Well, I think the biggest challenge that we uh, had to overcome is when we were merging uh, with Wachovia. So, um, Really working with this, uh, the service officers and the agents, they really had to connect with customers in three different uh, demographics. The first demographic were our legacy Wells Fargo customers that weren't going through a, any integration or any changes in products and services. Then we had those customers that were that just recently converted because the way we did the conversion and the integration with Wachovia, it was over a two-year period and customers were converted in groups. So if I was servicing customers, I may get a customer that would call in that was a legacy customer that had no change. I have, may have get a call uh, from a customer that just recently went through some changes and had questions about products and services of Wells Fargo and am I doing it correctly. Or I may be servicing a customer that uh, is a Wachovia scheduled to be converted but not yet converted. So there was three different personalities, and we had to work with the team members to make sure that they're able to uh, pick up on the nuances between the questions and pick up uh, um, on the conversation to make sure that we are addressing those concerns, making the customer uh, uh, feel calm and at ease at the integration, along with ensuring that, they, that the uh, service officers and the agents all had the pro appropriate tools training. Uh, they understood the products and services that the customers were converting uh, to and from uh, so they can answer questions. So building that whole infrastructure and, and getting them prepared for this integration, uh, we had over 65,000 customers we had to convert and uh, we did that. And uh, they did a great job in making sure that they're answering all the questions and being ex extremely proactive with uh, the customers and reaching out to uh, customers when they just converted, if there was any questions, do they need follow-up training? Um, so all that, uh, I would say, was probably our, our, our biggest obstacle uh, or challenge that we had to overcome during that, that integration. Um, so uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, George. Great answer. Um, Cheryl and Ryan, um, do you guys want to take this question now? Sure. I would say for us, consolidation and culture change were our biggest um, challenges. And when um, the 311 operation was developed, we actually consolidated several mini centers into a centralized uh, operation. And the challenges of that in, uh, included um, transitioning folks from environments in which um, they weren't really performing real-time work into a real-time work environment, and monitoring went along with that. So that was a huge culture change uh, for those folks. Addressing skill gaps, uh, because they came with varying level of skill gaps and not necessarily having to uh, perform tasks concurrently. So that was a challenge for us uh, to overcome as well. And um, the accountability from a perspective of shifting the viewpoint 
from the customer's perspective, away from a very internal focus. So there was a tendency to really look at things internally and not really understand it from the customer's perspective and make sure that we were communicating in a way that a customer would understand. So those are some of our key challenges in um, con consolidating and uh, moving through a, a change of culture. Great. Good answer. Brenda, could you share some of uh, Freeman's challenges that you guys have overcome? Yes. Um, being such a small call center, uh, probably one of our uh, difficulties is trying to convince uh, making a large investment in uh, state-of-the-art technology. The ROI is very low when you're trying to make a high-dollar investment on 17 people. However, our, uh, our executive team believes in us, believes in the call center and supports us, so we've had great support in the fact that we have a CRM software, and it was in-house written here at Freeman, and it actually is interactive with our uh, proprietary billing system that works uh, and that is outstanding for our reps to pull up any data and information on our customers. We also have a dedicated IT tech that ha has created an Excel macro of a workforce management scheduling system that is working excellent for our small team. Uh, we've also uh, been a we also were able to um, to uh, to make an investment in a call recording and quality monitoring solution that records and stores 100% of our calls and uh, provides agent portals and quality monitoring, scoring forms, training. Um, that was a, a huge um, investment for us here. And even though we're very small, because of the support that we receive, we operate as though we're a large call center. Great. Thank Great you. answer, Brenda. So as we at ICMI were going through the judging process for the Global Call Center of the Year Awards this year, we judged um, candidates on four main criteria, teamwork, communication, measurement and results, and innovation. And obviously all three of these contestants we have here today um, did really well. But for the lightning round, I'd be interested for each of you in 20 seconds or less to answer this question for our audience. And at the same time, we'll actually have the audience answer the question too, and then we'll see how the results compare. So Brenda, I'll actually let you go first on this one. Which area would you say your contact center is strongest in, if you had to pick one? Oh, which the, that I'm strongest in? I mm -hmm. would say um, teamwork. Okay. Uh, our customer support reps and uh, the and the uh, the commitment we get from the executive team, the support, and all around the company, the uh, IT marketing, it would be teamwork. Great. All right, uh, Cheryl and Ryan, I'll let you guys go next. I would say innovation. Okay. We have we take a little and and take a little and get a lot out of it. Great. All right. George, do you want to take this one now? Absolutely. I would say teamwork. Uh, I'm always saying that servicing our customers is a team sport. Uh, it takes the frontline personnel. It takes our uh, trainers. It takes our operational teams, our sales force, our relationship managers, um, just all working together to service our customers and deliver uh, on our A-plus service and support brand. So work it is. I like that. So customer support is a team sport. That's a good, that's a quote of the day. Well, let's see what our audience members had to say about this. Um, looks like the results are not pushing. It looks like 45% of you guys responded that teamwork was your strongest area. Um, second place was me measurement and results with 25%. And communication came in third place with 18.1%. And finally, innovation got 11.1%. So today with us we have um, K 
Kay from Jabra and Tona from i and I just touched on a few of the qualities that ICMI looks for in award-winning contact centers, but I want to give both Kay and Tona the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about what their organizations are looking for in award-worthy or winning contact centers and how they can help you get there. So Kay, I'll turn it over to you first. Great. Thank you. It says the poll results have not been pushed to the audience. There we go. Now we're ready. Okay. Um, so at Jabra, as we've worked extensively with contact centers of all types and all sizes, we see some common elements that are critical to companies who are delivering exemplary customer service. Uh, and, and you've heard these three companies talk about these areas, or at least most of them. So award-winning companies understand that they need to hire, to hire and retain the best agents and train them well. We heard Freeman talk about providing six weeks of training, assigning mentors to new agents, and then giving ongoing training through e-learning. The, the important thing to remember here is that your agents are the ambassadors of your brand, and they must be well trained to convey that. Uh, we heard all three of the companies that spoke today give their customers options for how they want to contact them, so not just phone calls, but email, web chat, and so forth. Sophisticated routing that's customized to the right level of service for each customer segment. We heard Wells Fargo talk about how they direct uh, each call to the best of four sites uh, so that they can deliver the fastest service and then using workforce optimization. Award-winning companies uh, are doing quality monitoring using those WFO applications. One of the things I loved on the call on the video today is that I heard Freeman talk about their Hall of Fame calls that they use to train other agents. And what a terrific concept. And also, it's wonderful for those agents whose calls have been identified as Hall of Fame. How great does that make them feel? Reporting and analytics. I remember it was over 15 years ago that I first heard this mantra, you can't manage what you can't measure. And that is still just as true today as it was then. And intelligent reporting um, and analytics help us understand more than just what happened, but why it happened. And then simply uh, looking at uh, rewarding and enabling agents. We heard a lot of that in the earlier part of this. The best customer service centers understand the power of a pat on the back to boosting morale. And I'm sure that helps with agent retention and customer satisfaction because happy agents make happier customers. And um, so an important point to remember uh, as we look at these things is that it's least common denominator in these elements. A stumble in any one of these areas could keep your company from delivering the award-winning customer service that you're uh, trying to provide. And as you well know, your task is more complicated than just delivering upon those critical elements we just talked about. It's an ongoing journey where you must, for example, develop and test business contingency plans. Uh, at a conference earlier this month, I co-presented a session with Virginia Utility Protection Services. That's Virginia's 811 service, the call before you dig. And their IT director talk, talked about how they replicated every component of their contact center technology. And then they literally pulled the plug to test it. Uh, to test that failover. And those efforts paid off in a big way. Uh, there was a huge storm that hit Virginia last, uh, last summer, not just Virginia, but much of the East Coast, and uh, BUPS lost power to their main location. They were operating with generators for a couple of days, and then the generator at the main site lost a bolt and literally flew apart. So their contact center operation flawlessly immediately converted over to that backup site, and they did not miss a beat. So make sure that you have a business contingency plan, a robust one, and that you test it. 
Um, and then on top of everything else, you've got to keep an eyeball on emerging trends. You know that. You may be looking at unified communications. Analytics are gaining big traction, big data, speech analytics. By the way, speech analytics, you may think that the price tag is too big, but take a look. There are surprisingly affordable options in the marketplace now. And one thing to keep in mind, if you have to meet regulatory requirements, in your business, the cost of one violation could exceed what a speech analytics solution might cost. Uh, looking at social media, track what's happening in social forums, proactively addressing problems before they explode, uh, mining for new opportunities. We heard Philly 311 in their video talk about how they respond to customers on Facebook and Twitter. And then, um, Implementing home agents. If you have not implemented a home agent program, it's going to become increasingly critical to you in being able to hire and retain the very best agents. It's something that all of the analysts are agreeing upon. So if you haven't launched your program yet, it's time to start. And um, I'll be happy to help. Uh, let me know if, there, if you need some materials to help you get started. Uh, and then, uh, last of all, uh, we are seeing more and more companies using wireless in their contact centers. Uh, one company that I talked with a couple of weeks ago told me that their agents often have to walk to a printer while they're on a customer call. And by implementing wireless, they were able to cut talk time and significantly increase customer satisfaction by going 100% wireless. And of course, this list of trends is just a sampler. Um, um, as uh, contact center professionals, all of us need to make sure that we look through industry publications on a regular basis, that we uh, join webinars such as this, attend conferences as time and money prevents, just so that we can stay current, because this industry is changing fast. So we looked at critical success factors, emerging trends. One other thing I want to talk about, make sure to equip your agents for success on the final steps in the journey to an award-winning conversation with your customers. Your agents need the right tools. They need integrated instant messaging on the desktop, screen pops, customer history, and so forth. Consider mobility. Would mobility help your supervisors and agents cut their talk time? Would it help them deliver first contact resolution? And uh, how are your agents' headsets working? Headsets actually are one of the most inexpensive components of your contact center technology, and yet it is critical to a successful customer conversation. The end uh, use, the end device on the agent's um, um, head makes or breaks the customer experience. Can you hear the difference with a high quality audio device? Your agents can and your customers can. So where do you go from here? If you're considering a move to unified communications and voice over IP, remember your UC platform is only as good as the headset you use. And when you're assessing those endpoints, if you have a telephone today, choose a headset that works with telephones as well as soft phones, that dual connectivity, so that when you move to UC, you're protecting your investment dollars. And as you consider mobilizing your workforce, perhaps you want to launch a trial group, analyze the before and after metrics. Does it improve talk time? Does it reduce that talk time? Does it reduce hold time? Is it improving first contact resolution? So assess how wireless impacts some of those metrics in your center. And then last but not least, as you add technology, keep an eye and an ear uh, attuned to how you can link applications that you're adding. For example, let's say you add speech analytics to your contact center, and maybe you add it to search for compliance, uh, regulatory compliance, maybe opportunities, maybe problem areas. You can also use it to search for phrases like, could you repeat that? Or I can't hear you. All of things that might indicate that the agent headsets are keeping you from delivering the type of award-winning customer experience that you want to deliver. Uh, and just in conclusion, analysts are saying that in today's highly competitive marketplace, providing great customer service 
is one of the few remaining ways that companies can differentiate themselves from their competitors. Um, so attending today's webinar shows that you are focused on delivering great customer service. And so I applaud each and every one of you uh, for setting and then uh, achieving your customer service goals. Thanks, Kay. That was some very valuable information, so I appreciate you sharing it. I will now turn things over to Tona at i -Corps. And Tona, can you just share with us a little bit about how you guys can help contact centers achieve award-winning status? Sure. Thank you, Erica. Um, I think some of the things I want to share with the audience are some of our best practices, and hopefully folks can, can take some ways um, of doing things away from this. Um, with our recent acquisition of the CCT group, we now stand 17,000 strong. Telling you a little bit about us, we are a global provider of outsourced services with a number of Fortune 500 clients. And similarly to what you heard from each of the three contestants, um, we feel that the emphasis on flawless service delivered to our customers is what really differentiates um, call centers today. Our focus is on attracting and retaining the best people and then provide them with state-of-the-art technology in our Tech 21 platform. And for us, it really starts with the recruiting process. Um, we place a high emphasis on referrals and certainly would recommend that everyone does so. We have a generous incentive structure. Um, it creates natural employee retention for us and also fosters a family atmosphere. And that goes even for our very large centers because current employees will encourage friends and family members to join us. Um, to give you an idea, we had 50,000 candidate referrals every, every year, including last year. And that does make up almost two-thirds of our applicant pool. We test the applicants. Um, emotional aptitude is done via our QFIT entrance exam, so we can place them into the client program that we feel they have the best natural aptitude for. Um, purpose is, of course, retention and then providing that outstanding service to each of our customers. We tested over 75,000 applicants last year. Um, that obviously means that we, from that pool, can choose only the very best to join our team. We recommend um, an interactive training platform. Our platform is, is called School. Um, it supports on-site training as well as remote training. It gives an added layer of flexibility to where we can conduct training anywhere in the world to anyone, anywhere. Um, and that includes our work at home agents. Um, the training is interactive. We have frequent stops, check for understanding, eliminate boredom, um, using either quick learning checkpoints or maybe even more elaborate exams. That's all done um, in cooperation and coordination with our clients. Um, the training system also is designed to schedule any required training sessions. That includes compliance training sessions for existing employees, and they're placed directly on their work schedule. So employees know in advance when they're scheduled and for what. Uh, exam results are stored. We flag them for any follow-up that's necessary. And the results are, of course, used in the uh, coaching by the frontline supervisors as well. The focus on people and then their growth and their career starts the very first day. Um, we're introduced into the i career path that you can see here. Um, we recommend a you know, very concise and easy to understand structure where people understand, you know, how do I get a pay raise? How do I advance with this company? What do I need to do? Um, we tie wages, bonuses, and benefits directly into their career progression. The people management processes are extremely structured and disciplined, and they include everyone in the company. I personally spend time on agent reviews every single month. Um, formal feedback is very frequent, especially during their early tenure. It's important that they understand where they stand and how they can get better. The best agents can advance really quickly, um, and they can increase their earnings rapidly, which again improves the retention in that group of employees, and they're the folks that you need to service your customers. It allows us to provide intense coaching and follow-up training for those that, that aren't doing as well and need that additional support. I really believe that that discipline is what allows us to deliver the kind of service that we deliver every day. 
And I think everyone spoke about having state-of-the-art technology, and for us, that's also an important cornerstone, and it's instrumental in delivering performance. Um, our platform, Tech21, uh, has won several awards as far as its innovative aspects. Um, you can see the hardware here on the screen. It's also comprised of proprietary applications, software that's used to manage every aspect, starting with telephony and going all the way to the human resources platform. Um, starts with a biometric login, definitely have best practice. It gives the highest level of desktop security. Um, the employee's fingerprint is what gives them access to our systems. Uh, their profile loads only those applications that they need for the calls that they're supposed to take and the clients that they're meant to service. The integrated phone uh, work bar is our integrated soft phone. It eliminates the need uh, for our hard phone on the S agent desktop, which obviously is a cost saving. Um, but it provides all the same functionality as an actual hard phone. And included with the soft phone is a chat functionality that allows the agent to interact with their supervisor. The supervisor can help multiple agents at the same time, cutting down on handle times and time spent waiting to get help. Um, and the supervisor can support agents that aren't geographically with them, and again, that helps support the work at home agents. The desktops are all thin clients, so it's a highly secure environment because there's obviously no data stored on these guys. And it gives us much higher levels of flexibility than a traditional uh, PC-driven desktop. We can scale these rapidly, they're easy to deploy, um, and we've done so repeatedly for many of our clients. Um, with the biometric sign-in, agents can work anywhere um, in any office anywhere in the world um, because the applications follow their actual fingerprint. Um, it creates a lot of redundancies, and they're obviously ideal um, both when you're scaling but certainly also for disaster recovery. And finally, the infrastructure, um, centrally located infrastructure in, in you know, dual redundancy data centers certainly is our best practice, um, gives us the option of routing calls anywhere in the world to any agent, and we can do so with moment's notice because of the desktop setup. Um, a lot of our clients take advantage of this today. Uh, it does allow unprecedented service levels. You can shift volumes as you need to to make sure you're always servicing those clients. Um, and it gives us a level of flexibility um, that's definitely unmatched. All right. Thanks so much, Jonah. Uh, that was certainly some great information as well. And at this time, we have a few minutes left. So um, we are going to – we've had some really good questions coming in from the audience, I see. And before we do that, um, I know we're not going to have time to get to everyone's questions today. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we will follow up with all of you guys offline to answer any questions that weren't answered. But we will be writing a follow-up article. So I would like to hear from you guys in the audience, which one of these topics would you like to see covered in an article? And I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to vote on that. And then we'll push those poll results once they're ready. While we wait for the poll results, um, one question that came through was someone wanted to know, Kay, if you could expound a little bit upon um, home agents and how you guys enable home agents. Oh, absolutely. So um, home agents is simply agents that do the same work that they ordinarily do in the contact center. They do it in their home offices. And much of the technology is the same. The, the applications are loaded onto that PC. Sometimes the uh, agent is required to provide a PC, and sometimes the company provides it. Um, and uh, so from a technology perspective, uh, you, the headset and the device that the user, uh, that the agent uses, is just as important for home agents because, you know, despite not having been surrounded by a cubicle full of other agents, then other factors such as a doorbell ringing, a neighbor's car alarm going off, which it did while I was on the call, um, and uh, you know, those things um, are are uh, part of the technology that an agent needs. Again, it's pretty much the same as what they have in the office, except they need a high speed internet connection. Uh, 
Um, I'll be happy to provide additional information if anyone wants it. Send me an email, kphelps at Jabra. Great. Thanks, Kay. Looks like we got and it's just the initial K. Thank you, Kay. Looks like we got those poll results in, and you guys um, would like to know what is one thing every contact center should do that doesn't require a large financial investment. So we will definitely get some tips and advice and feedback from our contestants today, and you can look for that soon on ICMI.com. Before we run out of time today, I want to make sure that we have time to select a winner for today's game show. So will it be Wells Fargo, Philly 311, or Freeman? If you guys could switch places with one of these contact centers, which one would you choose? Give you guys a few seconds to answer that, and then we'll push out the results. Um, in the meantime, we will take an, one more question from the audience. And this question is directed towards Freeman. Brenda, we have someone in the audience that wants to know if you were able to get the rest of the company on board with the CRM system. They said their support teams are terrific about keeping it up to date, but they still have trouble getting the rest of the company on board. Do you have um, any advice for that, Brenda? Um, we've actually experienced the same uh, situation, and and it's really just a matter of we keep we keep our own data in in our own spots in the CRM, and then the other departments put their information in other uh, in other areas of the CRM. So all of our data that we're needing, wanting, using is still there. Other departments can use it. We we are able to see what other departments are entering, but it do, it does not have a, a huge significant effect on what we're doing. We're we're maintaining our our efficiency, even okay. though they possibly are not as on board as we are. Great. Thanks so much, Brenda. You're welcome. Well, we're just about ready to announce our winners. So if I can get a drum roll, please. It looks like Freeman is our winner for the day. So congratulations, Brenda and team. And it looks like it was a tight race. So I want to really thank George and Cheryl and Ryan and Brenda all for their time today, as well as thank Kay and Tona for sharing their insights as well. Um, so we've had such a lively discussion today and had so much fun watching the videos and going behind the scenes that I'm afraid that we're out of time for questions. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we will follow up with a post on ICMI.com, an article in blog form, and answer all the questions that were left in the queue. And any questions that we're not able to answer in blog or article form, we will answer via email offline. So if you think of any other questions in the meantime, you may send them to me. My email address is estrother, S-T-R-O-T-H-E-R, at ICMI.com. Or you can always reach out to us on Twitter. Don't forget you can also download a PDF version of the slides today through the console shortly after we end this presentation. And I also need to mention that this presentation is copyright 2013 by ICMI. The presentation materials are owned by or copyrighted by ICMI, which is solely responsible for its content. And Jobber and ICOR are responsible for their content and opinions. So on behalf of ICMI and our sponsors, Jabra and i and all of our contestants today, thank you so much for attending, and I hope you guys learned some new things and got some great insights. Have a great day. <laughs>